everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Maria Soreo here at Dodger Stadium, joined by Will Lupartis. Will, always great to have you out here. Thank you. Another bright, sunny day out here. You know, a bright, sunny day for the Los Angeles Dodgers, who have been just phenomenal in the last two months. It's hard to believe now they were in last place, 12 games out of first place, and no one thought this would happen. No, I mean, they have this roster that they were expecting this before the season, but I think they just had so many new players, they couldn't get it together, and it, you know, a few things snapped together. And here we are now. You know, there were so many injuries, especially early on. I remember talking to Sue Falcone, who said that there was more injuries in the beginning of the season that she had ever seen. Stan Conti said the same thing, of course. So now everything's kind of coming together, and whatever clicked after Puig came, Hanley Ramirez got hot. Adrian Gonzalez has been probably one of the most consistent hitters in baseball. In fact, Don Mattingly saying that he's the best guy on the team. So there's been so many things, and, and the guys that people don't think about, like Skip Schumacher and Nick Punto and Carl Crawford, who's been great, and all the while, Matt Kemp's practically been on the DL all year. That's right. They got great utility guys. Yes. Sue, as you mentioned, has been doing a heck of a job because these guys have been getting hurt, and they've been coming off the DL, and, you know, sometimes they just make a little mistake and they get back on the DL. Right. But the Matt Kemp. But the, there's, like, a few players that are, it looks like they're trying to win the MVP on this team. I mean, there's some, there's some great hitting going on and, and pitching. There's just been a, just a lot of really positive things. And even on the nights, you know, this past weekend, Friday night, when it was, you know, they were down six runs until the eighth inning, they decided, you know what, we're going to win this game. Crazy. Yeah, it's it's the magic. I, I heard yeah. the word magic mentioned a little bit. It was on Twitter. And, 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 and not just Magic Johnson either. That's right. Well, maybe Magic's kind of bringing the magic that to, back to Dodger Stadium exactly. because down 6 nothing, you have a 1% chance mathematically of coming back to win the game. Yeah. Well, they made a, Tampa Bay made some mistakes, and Dodgers won the game. And, and Will, the pitching, of course, has been amazing on this team. Yeah, I mean, the, the hitters like Puig and Gonzalez and Ramirez, all, the, all this great hitting has been uh, in the headlines. But really, these, this pitching staff has come up with Grinky and Ryu, Kershaw, of course. Well, they're saying that it's the best one, two, three in the game. Yeah, they, they have great starters. But, um, you know, Kenley Jansen, he, uh, he, he's kind of had sort of a – you know, a learning, a quick learning curve because he came in and um, and, and and this season he has literally done his job as closing every game. I mean, I, like nobody's hitting them. So when they get the lead, when these great batters uh, give give us the lead, Kenley Jansen is putting them away, and that's what's a big reason for uh, these Dodgers being in first place. Kind of reminds me of the old Saito days when he would come out and everybody would get all excited, you know. And now Kenley's coming out and he's doing the same thing. Yeah, yeah, he's he seems unhittable. Don't want to jinx him, but um, yeah, this team, it's like you can't talk about one guy. That's the best part about a winning ball club like this is like everybody's doing their job, and that's why the W's are coming up. Well, we were with Mark Ellis actually the other night in the locker room. Same thing, he had the, the walk off that night, and it is every night. It's just a different player who's stepping up to the plate, and they never think they're out of it, and I think that's what's the most exciting. Right, that's intimidating for the opposing pitcher because they can't really – pick a guy to walk or, or or if if they do the next guy up is gonna you know blast something into yeah. center field or out of here now unfortunately the angels on the flip side have not had the season that we were all hoping i mean you know you think of a team with albert pujols and josh hamilton and mike trout who is phenomenal but they just have not been able to put it all together this year yeah i don't know um you, you know some teams build these uh, dream franchise with a bunch of all-stars and it doesn't work out. I mean, Pujols had he's kind of come off with an injury, but even before that he wasn't he wasn't really producing and it's too bad for the Angels. Yeah, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I, mean, I remember in spring training we were saying, you know, with, with Weaver and C.J. Wilson and still that wasn't quite enough pitching probably for them. Um, but you're right. You never know when that chemistry is going to happen. Uh, I think I still think Torrey Hunter being out of that mix this year was, was probably detrimental because he's doing great with the Tigers and and Irvin Santana is doing great somewhere else. So sometimes I think you have to stick with some of your players and and roll the dice. But it, it, it you just never know in baseball. Yeah, it is a weird game. You you, you can't just put together uh, all stars and win the game. I think something back to the Dodgers real quick. I think yeah. I think one thing that that has given them success is the camaraderie. Right. And um, you know I. I might be the only one who thinks this, but when they got in some brawls, some fights earlier, yeah, I think that really brought them together. Somebody attacked Grinky on the on the mound, right. and when you got a team that's cohesive like that, they feel like they're unbeatable. They they know they have talent, and when they're all, you know, adhesive together like that, mm -hmm. that's that's another way you can really put some wins together. You know, great story that, that Don Mattingly told recently. He said that, you know, when they were doing really badly, that Stan Kasten had walked by him one day and said, oh, you still work here? 
<laughs> you know, and I think that that's been, he's also been the catalyst, I think, for for keeping the team calm, for keeping them one game at a time, one game at a time, even when things look bad. You know, he still has that, he has that Joe Torre demeanor, which, of course, I think he got from Joe of all those years mm -hmm. of every day we just have to keep coming back out here. And even guys like Andre Ethier and, and the guys, the Matt Kemp's, and, you know, the guys that have been here for a while just, just, one day at a time, you know. Right. It's a long season, and I and I think it, you said the right word. The demeanor yeah. in a manager is, is a big is a big part of keeping uh, everybody on the same page and not feeling like you're out of it when you appear to be out of it in the, in the standings. Right. And you know, and going back to Mike Sosha, one of the best managers in the game. So I'm sure the Angels will figure this out. It's just that it, in this season, it seems like they've just had a lot of hurdles to overcome and haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, you know, these big signings they've made uh, can produce next year. Right. And, you know, we'll always hope for the Angels be in the American League uh, playoffs next year. Yes, of course, you know, Doug and I talked about in spring training that it would be a freeway series in the World Series, but maybe not this year. Not this year, but keep this Dodger team together and we well, can yeah. hope for 2014, right? Well, I think, I think that uh, I think this Dodger team is, is really poised now to go far into the playoffs, if not the World Series. I mean, this is we've seen this kind of magic before, Will, and I think that we're seeing it again. Yeah, it's not just the hope for Dodger fans. I think they're being recognized nationally as like a team that can hit and pitch. You know, if if if, uh, if they have a bunch of, you know, bombers with the bats, they don't always get the attention. But the pitching staff. So I was talking about the relievers Everybody. to the closer, and of course our starters. You know, our all our all star Clayton Kershaw. He is. Uh, he's he's, he, he's Clayton Kershaw. He's just yeah. he's just getting it done. But all the way through the line, the pitching is phenomenal. So I think they're they're really getting looked at as like a playoff contender now this year I was in New York for the all-star game and we have to talk about that because you know Clayton Kershaw represented the Dodgers usually we see Andre Ethier Matt Kemp we see more Dodgers Mike Trout for the Angels no Albert no Derek Jeter it was very strange I, you know to not see those guys yeah it's kind of a new a new age did you feel like it's a kind of a changing of the guard the, the baseball is kind of flipping in the new generation a little bit you know, a little bit I, I kind of did I mean of course Mariano Rivera this is his farewell tour so he was the big name of course you know David Wright because he's with the Mets it was in New York it was at City Field so those two guys got a lot of attention but it was a little weird like I said just not to see these big superstar names there but it was still really fun of course and I did have a chance to catch up with many of the players so let's take a look yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I think, uh, you know, the atmosphere's always been pretty loose in the clubhouse, and I think Donnie did a great job of not letting us get too down, you know, and uh, uh, we just kept battling, kept grinding, and then finally we started getting some players back and some guys with some serious thump and some talent, and we started hitting the ball, you know, and scoring some runs, and it just seemed like every night it didn't matter we were going to be out of a game if we were down 3 nothing early, and, uh, you know, it's just kind of started all clicking right now. You know, this is only going to happen once, so I better, uh, you know, try to sit back and enjoy it and, and have a good time with it. But, you know, to have, to be able to start an all-star game in your home city, at your home stadium, it's once in a career. And I'm going to try to make the most of it. I have my family here. I got friends here. And, um, you know, this is going to be special, especially for these fans. I mean, they, they deserve an all-star game probably more regularly than they get. Um, you know, the, in my eyes, this is the baseball capital, the baseball mecca, you know, of the world. So to be able to have it on this stage is, uh, you know, pretty special. It's an understatement. Patrick, what's it like being here, being an all-star? And, and it, you know, everybody played yesterday, so we know that it's difficult to jump on a plane and here you are. Yeah, no, I mean, my first all-star, it's fun for me. Uh, it's all, all new experience and um, something I never would have thought of to ever be here. So. I mean, you, know, you never know if you're ever going to be back, so I'm just trying to take everything in, enjoy it, and, and just try to have as much fun as I can. Where were you when you found out that you, you were an all-star? Um, I was at the clubhouse, and uh, our manager, Kirk Gibson, called me in his office uh, the day before they released uh, the teams and, and told me I made it, and, and congrats. And um, It was exciting and, and, and didn't know what to think at the time, and now being here, kind of taking things in, it's great. And um, I'm just I'm just glad I'm closer to home, so family and, every, and some friends are coming out to see me. Yeah. Well, where were you when you found out you were an all-star this year? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we were in Cleveland, and uh, Jim Leland actually came, you know, came up to me and, uh, and told me congratulations. And I was like, for what? He said, like, you made all-star. And, and, uh, and it was voted amongst the players, my peers. So I thought that was very special. You know, the players, they really know who, who sh who's deserving of an all-star or not and, uh, because they play the game. And uh, so I'm, I'm honored and, 
and uh, thankful that they, they, they chose me. You know, we pretty much remember in California that you were the leader in the clubhouse, and we hear you're doing the same thing now, of course, with the Tigers. How long did it take you to acclimate to that, to that locker room? Well, you, you don't go in and designate yourself as a leader. You just go in and, you know, be yourself and have fun, and, and, uh, and, and that's what I do. You know, I'm the counselor in the clubhouse. God need, needs problems. You know, they have problems off the field or, or on the field, whatever it may be, I'm, or financially or whatever it may be. I'm, I'm the guy that they come to because, trust me, I've been through some failures, you know, and I, I have a little experience under my belt. I'm only 28, you know, and, and so uh, – uh, they they definitely going to come get that information from me. You're playing pretty good for a 28-year-old. Just wanted to let you know that. Uh, yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's uh, HGH-free, steroid-free, all that stuff. It's just natural beans and cornbread. Is there, is, there any, uh, is there any real answers as to why you're playing the best baseball maybe of your life right now? Uh, well, you know, I'm actually smarter, okay. I'm a little more mature. You know, uh, I might not steal the bases, you know, uh, like I used to in the past. I could if you wanted me to. But it probably hurt getting up in the morning. But I, I definitely think that uh, I'm just have, I'm, I'm a lot more mature at the plate, you know. And uh, I've, I'm a guy that always wanted to learn and make adjustments. And and uh, the last couple of years, I've made some adjustments. And uh, and 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 that's that's why I'm, I'm doing the you know hitting the way I am now. It feels a little different. Uh, you know, it's I know what to expect this time. Um, you know, last time it was kind of like a. You know, whirlwind. I was going here, going there, going there, and uh, now it's just time to, you know, take it all in and you know uh, have some fun this, next to this. I mean, uh, it means a lot. You know, I mean, I have the uh, opportunity to play to play uh, for the last time in the All-Star game and uh, to participate in it. You know, uh, hopefully uh, the guarantee is the one that uh, be in a position that I can save the game. You know, uh, but uh, it's amazing, you know. I mean, have so many great players, so many good coaches, and uh, here in New York, you can ask for nothing better than that. Yeah, it has been quick. Yeah, it's going, it's moving fast too, and uh, it will move faster. So I mean, I'm gonna enjoy and, and do everything with uh, I can do and everything with I can uh, appreciate the game and uh, give back to to the game to the community also. And of course, well, any opportunity I get to go to New York, I take it. <laughs> yeah, I know. We went there together. That was, uh, that was a pretty cool place. Well, it was probably hot as yeah, can was. be there. It, but. It was, there was one day it was a little humid, which all the reporters and all the players that were there know about. But it was still New York, and it was still amazing. So I had a great time. It looked a lot, like a lot of fun. Well, the NFL season is quickly coming up, and we're going to talk about that a little yeah. bit later. Yeah. But staying with baseball for just a moment. Right. Maria, you got a chance to sit down here at Dodger Stadium to sit down with one of the beat writers for many years, Tony Jackson. He retired from the beat writer job, and now he's got his own blog, right? He does, and a really interesting story. You never know where people's journeys are going to take them, so it was really interesting to sit down and talk to Tony Jackson. You also know him as Dodger Scribe. Writing has changed over the years. I'm sure when you first started, it was different. Newspapers were bigger. There were some more of them, and there are less of them now. I know when you worked for ESPN, you were on ESPN.com. So things have changed in that area. And then for you, you got away from it for a while. Now you're coming back with a whole different perspective. Talk about why you left and where you are now. Well, I left. I was at ESPNLosAngeles.com for two and a half years, and uh, probably felt like a square peg in a round hole the entire time. I mean, it was just an approach that was very different from the way I was accustomed to doing things. And uh, I'm not saying it was a wrong approach, because in that age when newspapers are dying out and the internet is coming in, it, it, it probably was the right approach uh, for a, a media outlet such as that. But I never, my approach to covering baseball never really fit into it, and I think their idea and my idea of what a beat reporter is were, were two very different things. And as time went on and uh, some changes took place that I wasn't comfortable with and uh, you know and I was commuting back and forth from my home in Phoenix and I just decided that uh, it was time to uh, very very difficult very gut-wrenching decision to, to move on and it was a decision I'd been thinking about for probably three months and it took me that long to really pull the trigger and do it. So what brought you back to baseball? Um, just I'd love to say, oh, I just, it's just love of the game and, uh, and it's where I belong, but really... Uh, yes, Tony, that is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, a lot of great things are born out of desperation. And it's true. when you're out of work for uh, 14 months, as I was, um, I say 11 months when I started, made the decision to do this and started putting all the pieces in place, 
you start to realize there's not a lot of there's not a big market out there for a 46 year old who's uh, only done one thing for most of his career, and uh, these aren't necessarily the most transferable skills in the world. So, uh, I was totally prepared to move on and do something else with my life. But then I found that those options weren't really there, and uh, I've always been a big believer in self sufficiency and um, creating your own destiny, especially when no one else will create one for you. And I had a couple of close calls on jobs that didn't come. To, to pass and, uh, you know, major disappointments. And uh, it just came to the point where I just said, you know what, if this is what I'm meant to do and this is what I love to do and this is what I want to do, I'm going to do it and I'm going to find a way. And if nobody else will give me the, the a bit opportunity, I'll create the opportunity for myself. Well, and you did find your way back. You're starting your own blog. And it's interesting, a few years back, I had talked to, to Josh, our old PR guy here at the Dodgers, and he says, you know, bloggers are the way of the future, and we have to look at them and see what they're doing because the newspapers are dying out. So this is really, this is an area where people are reading now. Yeah, and, I th and you mentioned Josh, right, which is now with the Diamondbacks. He it was at the forefront of accepting bloggers. And, and I believe the Dodgers, when he was here, were the first team to credential bloggers. Um, if you can create a blog, there are a million blogs out there, but if you can create one that really sets itself apart, mm -hmm. and that's going to be my goal with this thing every single day, really set myself apart, um, I think you can you can shine. And, and you're ahead of the curve. And if bloggers d do become the wave of the future, you can always say you were way ahead of the curve and you were one of the original ones. When I was reading some of your blog, I, I noticed that you know the way that you're going to do things is going to be a little bit different. You have something most people don't have. You have a tremendous amount of experience. What has it been like being back in the stadium for you? Uh, you know, I was a little nervous coming in here on Friday because after being here for nine years, I felt like a little bit like the rookie again. <laughs> but the minute I walked in, just the welcome I received from everybody and, and how happy everyone was, it, it, it really does. You know, I told somebody the other day, I feel a little like Sally Field. It's like, you like me, you really like me. But, uh, you know, it's been amazing. It's, everybody has been so great and gracious and welcoming. And then yesterday uh, was the second day and felt a little more comfortable. And I think walking in here today was like, just like I'd been here every day for the past. Left. Yeah, exactly. And it's, you know, a few things have changed in the 14 months since I've been gone. The just, new just a couple things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a couple of things. But it's still the same ballpark and the same city and the same, uh, well, it's not going to be the same routine, uh, but it's, you know, because it's a whole different outlet. But it's very much, it just feels like, a, like an old comfortable pair of shoes that, you know, they, they feel comfortable again. For people that are going to want to follow your blog, what's going to make it different from maybe a beat reporter every day? Well, uh, it's going to be, there's two elements. I want to set it apart from other blogs okay. first. And the way I'm going to do that is by being on the road with the team, which I always was as a beat writer, but most blogs are not. Right. Um, and, you know, I want to be there every single day uh, because I think that's what fans are aching for that. And the way I'm going to set my part, way of self apart from the other beat writers, I think, is it's going to be a different kind of coverage. Now, I'm going to give them uh, whatever news there is. I'm probably not going to really stress out over being first anymore like we were in newspapers where we were all just scrambling to beat each other and be the first. You know, I want to, I, what I want to do with news breaks is get it out there and give them the best analysis. And get, I think that was always my talent as a, as a beat guy was telling them what it all meant. Um, and I want to do that. Uh, but really what I want to do more than anything with this blog is take people where they want, can't go. I want my readers to feel like they're walking around here with me every day. I want sure. them to feel like they're walking into the clubhouse or walking down every hallway. They're, you know, I want to, there's going to be a lot of photos, there's going to be a lot of video, and there's going to be a lot of visual description within the text. Um, I, I think I put in the, in the intro post, I want you to see what I see, hear what I hear, and even, if possible, smell what I smell. So that's, that I think is what readers are itching for. And in my you would occasionally write that way in a newspaper, and I found that the response that I get when I would write that way, just the readers love it. They want to be where they can't be, and, and, and that's, it's, it's hard to make them feel that way, but that's going to be my goal every day. We're looking forward to your blog. Where can people find you? Dodgerscribe.com. Uh, I gave it that name to match my Twitter account, which yep. everybody knows me at, which is at Dodgerscribe. But it's Dodgerscribe.com, and I'm uh, going to try to update it several times a day. Uh, off days, maybe only once or twice, uh, but we're going to do a lot in the off season too. So Good. this is going to be a year round, everyday thing. Uh, you know, I could see myself blogging from a from a beach somewhere and on a vacation in December at some point. So uh, you know, stay tuned and check in early and often, and uh, I'm, I'll try to provide you with uh, uh, more fresh content than you can even keep up with. 
Well, that was a lot of fun to catch up with Tony again. And you just never know where your paths go in life. And it's great to have him back here at Dodger Stadium, that's for sure. Yeah, Tony's a cool guy. It was enjoyable to meet him and follow him on Twitter at Dodger Scribe. And his website is dodgerscribe.com. What is your what, what is your Twitter? It's my name, William Lapartis. And Maria Sports. So follow all of us because we'll give you all the latest and greatest from wherever we are that day in sports. And you know where I've been hanging out lately. I know. It's August, so it's football time. It's time for Dallas Cowboy Camp. It's been a lot of fun up there. Um, you know, it's, it's so interesting. We have no team here still in Los Angeles. And whenever you get to a training camp, it's so much fun. You forget, you know, just, just the smells and the sounds and just everybody working together. And yeah. Smells. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, well, for a month, you do have a, grass. you do have a town, a team in LA for like yeah, a few weeks, right? That's right. Yeah, we have the Dallas Cowboys here in Oxnard. Um, I've had a chance to go up there and just listen to Jason Garrett talking, and Jerry Jones was there the other day, and just seeing how the players change from you know week one, week two, or in week three now, mm -hmm. and you can see the guys that are, are starting to get it more, starting to, to to do more stuff than the first week. And of course, what's really interesting to me is there's no more like two a day, two a days. They do a walkthrough in the morning, and then in the afternoon they're in pads. So it's not as hard as it used to be, Will. It's not. It looks. Yeah. It's pretty hot out there, and Romo's making his connections to Des Bryant, which I'm sure you like. But I do like that. It yeah. still looks pretty hard for those guys. Well, it's not as hard as it used to be, though. But they're getting better at it, and I've had a chance to sit down with some of the players and talk about they've got some new coaching going on out there, and uh, they're starting to put it together. So let's take a look. Um, it's been great so far, you know. I mean, I have no complaints. Um, you know, Coach Kiff, he's been in the game a long time. Um, he knows what he's doing. You know, we're just trying to trying to do a good job of coming out here every day and just learning from him. Like the little small things in, in your technique, being you know, being where you're supposed to be at all times. You know, like I said, the coach is doing a great job of, of putting us in position to, to be successful. We just have to go out and um and, um, and compete. How long does it take to sort of get to know a new coach like that? Um, well, it, it didn't take long. You know, I got a chance to um, be around be around them all all the part of the off season, you know. So it didn't take long to to, to um to get into what what he wanted and what he expect from from his corners. Well talk a little bit about working with Coach Kiff and what that's been like for you guys in the defense. Uh it's been good. You know, um everybody's learning. Everybody's trying to, you know, uh, understand what he wants, the intensity that's uh, needed. But uh it's been it's been good. It's fun. Some days it's fun. But it's, uh, it's very challenging, it's very hard, but that's the way it's supposed to be. You're switching obviously from the four three to the three four. What's the biggest learning curve in doing that? Um well, I played four three early in my career, so I know I know it a lot and I um, understand it. But in a three four, you know, you have more flexibility, um, and it's not a designated run gaps. You know, you just fit where needed. Right. Here, everything's detailed and precise, and um, that's the that's the major difference. So you got to understand runs, you got to understand run fits, you got to understand how you fit within the scheme of the defense and everybody working together. Um, so you know, that's a major def that's a major thing that I see. Everybody talks about Coach Kiff being 72 years old, but he's running around out there like he's a lot younger than that. Yeah, he has a lot of energy. I remember uh, 10 years ago, you know, six years ago, really, you know, he used to jog two to four miles a day. And I was like, how's this old man doing this? <laughs> but he got a lot of energy, man, and he brings a lot of it uh, to our team, which is good. Well, it, uh, it's a good feeling. If you're in my shoes, uh, that uh, experience and, uh, of course, uh, it's inspirational to see his uh, how enthusiastic and how into it he is, uh, although there is not any surprise here. Uh, he's meeting the expectations that we all had. Uh, and so um, I, I, I think I can say that I expected his work ethic, uh, his impact on the team, uh, and certainly uh, his knowledge. I expected all of that. Uh, I sure uh, uh, like it when he's uh, happy about how practice went. 
You know, it's interesting to see younger players talk about, uh, you know, a coach like Monty Kiffin who's been in this game for just forever, really, and they all mesh together. They play great. He teaches them so much, and there's just something special about football. We really have to get a team back here, Will. I know. You think the Dallas Cowboys are going to come out here? No. It wouldn't be the same, would it? No. no. Yeah, we're going to get a team someday. I don't know when, though. We'll take pretty much anyone, and if the Cowboys want to come, we'll, we'll take you. But I don't think they're going to leave Dallas, and I don't think they should. They won't. No. And they should stay in Dallas. But bring football back to L.A., please. Yeah. And, but meanwhile, Will and I will try to get to some more games for you. We'll definitely get up to Oakland with the Raiders and maybe San Diego. And we'll maybe the 49ers, too. we just we got to get some football going. That'd be, you know? That'd be fun. Take right? me with you. Okay. We, we can do that. But, Maria, you know a little bit after football starts, yeah. the NBA's coming back. Tra training camp starts in a few weeks. Has the NBA ever really left here? I feel like we've been talking about Kobe's injury, Dwight Howard leaving. I don't yeah. think that we've – Doc Rivers is now here. We, we have not stopped talking about this. L.A. fans like to keep the Lakers in the clip – well, mostly the Lakers but. – going throughout the summer, a lot of drama. But, you know, the Clippers brought even more to their, their arsenal. Doc Rivers right. from the world champion Boston Celtics a few years ago. He's a great coach. Used to play for the Clippers. Um, got a young guy from the Charlotte Bobcats that nobody knew that Doc loved. Right. This guy named Byron Mullins. He's going to back up Blake Griffin, and he's got a jump shot, and he can dunk about as good as Blake. Well, not quite, but they're going to have a great squad. And the Lakers... Uh, well, Chris Kamen's going to be with the Lakers, which is going to be interesting. It's so interesting yeah. to me the way they swap sort of back and forth. Guys that used to be on one team on the other. So it's going to be interesting. That's right. He was a longtime Clipper. Now he's going to be playing in the same building, wearing the purple and gold. And taking uh, Dwight Howard's place. That's going to be interesting to see how the fans react to Evan Kamen and, you know, Nick Young and Wesley Johnson, some guys that they're not they look different. Not a lot of stars on this Laker team, but maybe D'Antoni can put together his system a little better with these guys. You know, as long as Kobe and Gasol are on the Lakers, though, they're always going to have big stars on that team, I think. Those guys are big stars for sure. And I think Kobe in this injury, like, he's been uh, tweeting and Instagramming yeah, the heck out of this summer and he's really turned into an Arash Markazi serial tweeter I'm telling you like he's yeah. constantly on yes Arash follow Arash Markazi by the way because you'll see the best meals in America on Instagram and you'll and, and honestly the best tweets about sports from Arash Markazi he's always on Twitter I don't know how he sleeps or when he sleeps probably doesn't Goes to bed at three, wakes up at seven. I'm pretty sure, but yeah, we love we love Rosh, but, though. But but Kobe Bryant is is yeah. making everybody know that he's going to come back, maybe opening night, I know. and he he plans to win a sixth championship. That's for yeah. sure. That's and what Doc he, Rivers is planning to win their first year in LA. So this is going to be fun. Yeah, LA basketball it keeps getting better. I, I I anticipate this season to be better than the last or any one in years past. And uh, the Lakers and Clippers start the NBA season in late October, opening night. Okay, well. In early October, we're thinking that the Dodgers are probably still going to be busy, and that's going to be a lot of fun, that's for sure. we got to go, Will. They're going to start a game here soon. They're going to kick us out. Oh, boy. We have a great fall coming up in L.A. We do. It's going to be fun. Well, let's go watch this great Dodger game, though. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, and don't forget to tune in next time when we will have more football, baseball, basketball, and auto racing. Thanks so much. I'm Maria Sorreo for Will Lupartis, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.